Welcome everyone to the South End Zone. I am Chad. You see Tyler right there, fresh off of that delicious cocktail party of interceptions and uh, <laughs> yeah. torn hamstrings. But before we get into that, Aggie Nation, I got a little something for you. Sit down. <laughs> Texas 8 and 4. You will always be Texas 8 and 4. Until proven otherwise, you are Texas 8 and 4. And Texas 8 and 4 is alive and well <laughs> because South Carolina took Aggie Nation to the woodshed on Saturday. Now, listen. I know you could say, oh, I, I saw somebody, some idiot on Twitter, and there's a there's a bunch of them. The Texas A&M fans really feel like they just owned LSU on a couple of Saturdays ago. And look, I'm no reservations whatsoever. LSU stepped in it, got their ass beat. They they did it to themselves, and Texas A&M came with what they came with. And you got to give credit where it's due. It wasn't just in a vacuum that LSU shot itself in the foot. AM brought some pressure. AM made a switch at quarterback. Marcel Reed did his thing. LSU failed to prepare. AM took advantage of the fact that LSU failed to prepare. But you saw what South Carolina did when they had some time to prepare for Marcel Reed. Yep. Marcel Reed wasn't the Jesus that everybody was talking like he was. Dude had like a quarter and a half of yep. a team being completely unprepared for him. And going with the give play on every single read option. And he's just peeling off to the side <laughs> untouched. Like he's, he's good, but he's not that good. And mm -hmm. you saw what he did when he was trying to throw the ball. Anyway, yep. I think we can safely categorize what happened to LSU a couple of weeks ago in college station was more in the flukish category where LSU was in control of that game for three and a half quarter or for two and a half quarters. And then halfway through the third quarter, Garrett Nussmeyer throws a, a pick completely unnecessary, didn't need to make the throw, threw into double, triple coverage, and flipped the field over to where right. now you bring in this quarterback, Marcel Reed, and he's got an eight yard field to deal with. Right. That's what I mean. Like you set the, you, AM, you got set up for the best Seriously. possible scenario to create it's, that comeback. That's what everybody then, said. Then, then we snapped the ball off the holder's face Yep, to keep ourselves from getting a field goal that would have put us up by a full touchdown again anyway. And so then you march down the field and yes, okay, cool. You got, you, you, you marched down the field and got another touchdown um, on a somewhat short field, but running the ball with Marcel Reed. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we needed to adjust a little bit better. Offense puts together a drive later on. We get a touchdown. We still apparently can't, uh, can't guard. Anyway, the point is we kind of handed it to you. Garrett Nussmeyer yep. threw three terrible interceptions and it was more in the flukish category. What happened on Saturday in Columbia? Williams Bryce. When Williams Bryce Stadium <laughs> did its thing and the sandstorm yep. swept through Aggie Nation. Beaver ball. This is the kind of beatdown you guys took on. 530 yards of total offense <laughs> for South Carolina. Beamer ball, 244 baby. passing on 13 completions. Fuck. Nine yards per attempt, and he was under 50% completion percentage was uh, Lenora Sellers. 286 yards rushing, 6.7 a carry to your 3.4. And look, uh, Le'Veon Moss getting hurt early. I'm sure that was, uh, you know, a kick in the crotch. Yeah, but sure. the reality of the matter is, like, this game, it, and, and you look at it, uh, Lenora Sellers threw a pick that that looked like it was a pick six. I don't even think the guy stepped out of bounds, but they never reviewed it. They just kind of said, oh, no, he was stepped out of bounds, so whatever. It, The game would have been over at that point, if not for that, that we had to, like, watch it and kind of sweat through it a little bit longer because yeah. it was only a 10-point game. For, for a little while until uh, South Carolina fully, finally pulled away. And then Lenora Sellers got stripped on a on a sack and fumbled um, another time. But, uh, you know, the, it wasn't just a turnover thing because the, the South Carolina actually turned the ball over early, and it was a really critical turnover. Rocket Sanders has a big play. He's going across the middle. They're up 14 to nothing, or maybe 14-3, with a chance to go put it up put themselves up 
21 to three mm-hmm. and he gets hit. They punt. Now it's a great play by the DB comes through and punches the ball from behind. Yeah. But again, you, you, you had an opportunity handed to you. A&M actually came back and took the lead in this game. And then South Carolina got a field goal late in the second quarter to tie it up. A&M got the ball to start the second half, three and out. South Carolina never looked back. A&M didn't okay. score the whole second half. Got outscored anyway. 24 to nothing. Yeah. So um, you got you got thumped. You got thumped as you should have uh, two weeks ago. It is what it is. LSU is just I'm, – I'm coming to realize more and more that, yes, coaching plays a, a very important role, and coaching is where some of the things on the margins – can uh can be the scales can be tipped in one direction or the other but the reality of the matter is when you have the dudes where you can make these games because if AM had what they need this would have never been close yep what they did was they let the dudes that south carolina had do their thing uh canard and stewart and yeah uh and lenore that's sellers that's and rocket line. sanders huh that south carolina d lines legit Yo, listen, and and this I don't even know her name. Some ch- this chick on unnecessary roughness or whatever on uh, uh, Barstool or whatever. She thinks she's she knows everything. She was oh, talking she shit went about to Texas A&M. Yeah, yeah, she went to Texas a and She was talking shit about the LSU game, and then she came and you know she did her thing where she she pissed on our grave a little bit, and it's cool and all that. But what she had done before that was she talked about how LSU hadn't played any defenses the whole year, and really like. We put it on that Texas A&M defense the first three, two and a half quarters of that game. And she was talking shit about South Carolina's defense, how they're not any good. What you saying now, Kaylee or Casey or whatever this the hell your Smith. name is? Casey Smith. Yes. Yeah, Most whatever. I'm, look, let me get my bit off where I that pretend like fun? I don't know who she is. Oh, All right. Um, anyway, <laughs> you're still Texas A&M 4 until right. proven otherwise. And I still fully see it in – the realm of possibility, the window is open for a loss to Auburn and then a loss to Texas and Austin and eight and four is alive and well, and we see it all happen again. And the way it is right now, if AM doesn't beat Texas, if they don't win out, they are not making the playoff. It ain't happening. Why is it? Why is it? True. <laughs> yes, exactly. The, 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 Damn right. With me. Correct. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So what do we do? We, you know, we've got, we're going to preview uh, week 11 coming up later on in the week, but it's LSU versus Alabama for survival um, in the playoff hunt. And it is college game day coming to Baton Rouge yet again for, I think the 14th Damn. time now. Yep, LSU has had game day either on the road, on a neutral site, or at home 37 times, 35 times. Yeah, because you guys had 37 times. Oh, that was at Columbia mm-hmm. this year, mm-hmm. that year this year, right? That was at South Carolina. Yeah. Right. LSU, yeah. I think, is 22 and 14 or 23 and 14, 22 and 13, something like that. When they uh when when game day is at one of their games. Yeah. Um and I don't know what the home road record is on that, but uh, anyway, exciting times yeah. for Tiger Nation. We've got it. We've got it set up, and that collision course, Tyler, is still alive and well because the way things are working out. Because Texas has had such a soft schedule, if LSU wins out and Georgia wins out and Texas wins out, do you know who plays in the SEC championship, my friend Tyler? Do tell me, LSU Georgia. Because Texas would lose the tiebreaker because what, what it goes to is your opponent's record within the SEC. Okay. And Texas's SEC schedule includes Miss, Mississippi State, who has not yeah. won a game yet. Oh. LSU's SEC schedule includes South Carolina, Texas A&M, Alabama, Ole Miss, Vanderbilt, Oklahoma. Um, I'm missing somebody. Anyway. Arkansas? Arkansas, yes. So a bunch of teams that are not 0-7 or anywhere close to that, a bunch of yeah. teams with winning records, maybe one or two losses in conference. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, so it's it's going to be what, – what it what it really boils down to is when you're looking at your conference or record, record of your opponents, the yeah. biggest thing that matters is who did you play that your other tiebreaker teams didn't play? Mm. And who did they play that you didn't play? 
and how do those records match up? Gotcha. And so Texas didn't play South Carolina. LSU didn't play Ole Miss. I mean, I didn't play Mississippi State. Yeah. So Texas is screwed there. That's like a flip of like three wins. Or, I yeah. mean, three three losses, um, five wins. Gotcha. So anyway, so the collision course, my friend, is still alive and well. LSU's just got to take care of business this week with Alabama. We will get to that later on in the week. But for now, the reason why the collision course is still alive and well is because Tyler, you Ooh. guys survived a tailgate party that included <laughs> uh, a cocktail of uh, a tailgate party, a cocktail party of uh, interceptions and hamstring injuries and targeting penalties and unsportsmanlike conducts and yeah. all kinds of other Ugly. craziness. What do you think? Do you think Georgia wins that game if DJ Lagway doesn't get hurt? It's it's hard to say. I, I... He wasn't doing enough for them at the point that he got hurt to where I'm like, yeah, that's a problem. However, Carson he, Beck was doing plenty though. Right. That's what I mean. It's like it wasn't more on Lagway. It was more of that Carson Beck was trying his best to piss the game away early. I will say, dude, that that kid Lagway, like, is mm-hmm. like, I don't want to say dollar store Cam Newton, but like literally, mm-hmm. like, you know, big can move. Seems like he has an arm on him. Like, mm-hmm. I think it's just so unfortunate the way he goes down. Like, yeah. he's literally just running for the first down, and you just kind of see him fall to his knees. And well, it's like, like the way his shit. foot planted and his yeah. foot slipped as he planted. That yeah. It's like that the hamstring just couldn't help but pop because it got yeah. overextended. Right. And if you feel bad because, like, nobody hit him. It's mm-hmm. like he got rolled up on. It's just like he's just running, and the, his the force of his body literally tears yeah. his own hamstring. Uh, but that he got game, some big ass hamstrings too. Dude, that's what I mean. He's got some <laughs> thighs on him, dude. <laughs> he's built like a damn. Well, he's built like that kid from uh, that Russell kid from uh, from Arkansas, dude. Uh, yeah, <laughs> dude. That, seriously, he's built like he's like the better KJ Jefferson. Let's be real. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, we started out. We look, and here's the thing: is like we start out with that game. It's like best getting some completions. Our receivers are getting wide the hell open. Yeah. Like, why the hell open? And Beck's hitting him. And mm-hmm. even was hitting guys, like, in tight windows. Like, like, yep. like at that time. It's like, you know, he has a step. I'm going to play right Smith here. And was catching the ball? And yes, he was. Did you see that? <laughs> he was catching the ball. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. But you see what I mean, though? We have a lot of speed to where they can get five yards of separation, mm-hmm. and Beck just has to hit him. You know, like, so that mm-hmm. happened a lot. Right. Um, you know, we see Ratlitz kind of getting reinserted back into the lineup. Um, at guard, which is great for us. I think we look the best when it's Fairchild and Ratledge on opposite sides of the ball. I just think that's like Beck's more comfortable. It's what it seems like is when Beck is forced to make uncomfortable throws, he can't do it. Is what I've noticed with a clean pocket and time to look. It's bam, it's there, it's there, it's there. It's like he can dissect a defense. But like, you think how much of it though do you think is him staring stuff down? Because it looked like a couple a of those was like it's like he drew well, the second and third see, defenders you, to did, the ball with his you, eyes. Did you see the picture I sent you? Like I, I, I don't mm-hmm. know if I can mm-hmm. push. Yeah, like, like what do you? Where did you think the ball was gonna go? He threw <laughs> the ball into this. Yeah, into that. Like he, I hope everybody can see that he threw the ball into that. Like the, the receiver, and it wasn't. Like, it's not like that's just a bad frame. Of no, it. like if you watch the if you watch the, the two seconds prior there. to that, it's, it was they were already there. Like it was just like there's no. Well, the there first no one the too. Even. It's double coverage on the sideline. Like where are you throwing mm-hmm. that other than out of bounds? Like there's, like I don't, and I don't know. I'll, I'll give you this. Like if he if he looks at that and and gives it a shoulder. Yeah. And then lets the receiver continue to move, and then because then you draw that safety, right? And that yeah. linebacker, that linebacker is not in position anymore. Right. But he, it's like he threw it at the worst possible time. He threw it, he threw it either too late for yes. because the because those guys got there, or too early because he didn't let the receiver run right. away from that. I coverage. think it's coming to timing because it's like you look at the mm-hmm. way the play develops, and it's like okay, I see where he might have been open. By the yeah. time the ball has left his hands, he's not open anymore. Or it's like he's throwing it. I'm like, well, if you would have waited two, three seconds, you would see where the receiver would then be open Mm -hmm. after the fact. However, but when he threw that ball, he was already pressured. So if he doesn't get the ball, he's taking a sack. Right. However, I feel like if he didn't feel good about it, he should have thrown it away. Yeah. 
Like, yeah. I mean, he was in the pocket, so Listen. it's hard to say. Like, with a clean pocket, I trust Carson back for the most part. Like, right. there, there are times with a clean pocket, with a clean pocket, he's still staring down receivers and DBs are literally, like you said, like he's literally just like dragging DBs to the ball, like like double coverage and turning into triple coverage because the safeties are just literally sitting up and watching his eyes. Um, however, I mean, I think we got the run game going. You know, Nate Frazier stepped up. I mean, I know yeah. we get the – I mean, listen, I – you know, Kirby doesn't let that shit play. When Frazier scores a touchdown and does the like, – Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, 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 you literally watch one of – I think it was uh, – it might have been Truss or mm. um, I forget who it was. But literally, like, Frazier scores and one of our, like, upperclassmen offensive live and let her do this. And walk up to him. Like, <laughs> you're about to get your ass – like, he literally, like, pass him on the back and points at <laughs> like Coach Smart. Like, you're about to go get your ass chewed out. Have fun. <laughs> Like, that's on you. Like, because they throw the unsportsman like penalty on them, too. Right, right. It's the same thing if I do it horns down, like, whatever. Like, it's like I I get the, I get the, uh, the idea, but bro, like, you can't do that. Kirby Smart doesn't let that shit fly, in my opinion. Like, people have done way worse things to get. Well, I was going to say, my my only, my only issue with that stuff is that it's so unevenly enforced. Yeah. Because I saw, I don't remember what game it was. But I saw a game where a, a guy just destroyed a receiver on right. the sideline to stop him short of a first down, uh-huh. and then got up. And he his he's already facing in that direction. He gets up and he's like talking as yeah. he walks over the guy, and they throw the flag on him for walk. You know, basically walking over a guy, yes, that's um, that's taunting, that taunting that way. Yeah. So, and then I see it three more times the rest of the day, and it's never called. And I'm just like, well, it, it, it's either a penalty or it's not. Like this is, this is so stupid. Like it's so arbitrary. You can you can change, especially on a play like that where it's like it's third and two, and you stop a guy short of the, short of the first down. So now it's fourth and one, and yeah. now you just gave them a first down, and they were on their own twenty six, and so yeah. they were going to punt it, and now you just extended their, extended their drive, and then on another play like the same, and and the other thing is too. It tends to be, you know, he doesn't get called for that stuff. What, yeah. um, you know, some of these some of these schools don't get called for that stuff. But the, um, if somebody's trying to upset them, they, they'll get called for it. So for it's just sure, kind of It kinda is wild. what it is. Like, there's that. Yeah. I mean, and we were down, like, up until, like, the middle of the third quarter. We only had two, mm-hmm. we had two field goals to our name in the whole first half. And um, we go down, we score. Florida fumbles, gives us the ball back, we score again. And that's yeah. kind of like, okay, that's it. We put one more insurance touchdown on the board to kind of call it. Like they score one more time. We win 34-20. And like I said, Lagway staying in that game definitely complicates things for us given mm-hmm. – I think it, gave, it would give them the opportunity to capitalize on Carson Beck's mistakes more is what I will uh, say. I will not I'll, say they win I'll that game. That. Okay. I'll add to that. I think it also – exacerbates the pressure that Beck was starting to feel. I think that yeah. when Lagway went out and then Florida started going three and out yeah. and not being able to move the ball, it was almost like you could sense everything calm down yeah, and they got back. They were able to get back to the running game. They mm-hmm. knew they didn't have to go toe to toe anymore. Yeah. They just were like, all right, we got them at arm's length. Let's just keep them there. Yeah. And it's not going to be that hard to keep them there. And then once you eat, once you do that, now you're you're a lot more free. Yeah. You're a lot more uh, it, it the, the, that that tightness. Yeah, that tightness that was there before is not there anymore. And so now Beck doesn't feel like he has to fit into these tight windows. Yeah. And that pressure is done not really like getting to him as badly. So I I wonder. It's one of those things where like we'll never know. It's like a you know Schrodinger's cat. Like we'll never yeah. know what things would have been like. Uh, had Lagway not gotten hurt, the reality of the matter is that he did get hurt, and so yep. we're we are where we are. Thank goodness, though, because it would have been a really crappy uh show today if uh if you guys had lost. Yeah, but thanks, uh, the collision course, the collision course is still alive and well for us to meet in Atlanta. However, um, I have a feeling that we have the most marble on a glass tabletop quarterbacks in the sec yeah, they're they're potentially the best in the sec and potentially the worst Dude. depending on 
what play it is, what down. It, you know, it's it's just Carson they, back. Are they going to throw the game away, or are they going to literally Bro. just like bring you back from the dead? Carson Beck is on his Tampa Bay Jameis Winston type shit right now. He's he's 15 and 8, 15 and 9, I think, right now on the season, bro. He might throw 20 and 20, and we might have to still get to the playoff. Like, like, that's fucking terrible. I mean, like, we have Gunnar Stockton as a backup, and then we have two young guys, Ryan Puglisi and Jaden Rashada, which are both, they're both like, right now, they're about like 180 pounds soaking wet. So they need a Mm -hmm. time. But yeah, Florida with the Yale transfer was very interesting. Kid goes like seven through. I feel bad. You gotta, and you know, like, dude. And also, you see Lagway go down. You see Graham Mertz on the sideline going like, fuck. Like you could just tell yeah. like, he was up. Like that was they they mm-hmm. they had a um, like a one score lead on us for like most of the game, and then like we just kind of yeah. once again like we score in bulk. Like we yeah. Like we go, like we will like ride it out, and all of a sudden go touchdown, fumble, touchdown, and then all of a sudden it's a two score flip, and that's kind of what happened mm-hmm. for us in that uh, third and fourth quarter. You know what I mean? So I don't know. We we survive. Beck is still fighting demons. Two, two <laughs> touchdowns, three interceptions, and three hundred yards passing. We have three receivers over fifty yards receiving. I will say, I was very proud of the receiving core mm-hmm. with this game. Like they were giving Beck looks. They were wide, like they were, dude. They were zone busting. They were wide the hell open. They were making like when Beck was trying to force it, they were making the catches. Mm-hmm. I was very proud of the receiving core in this game, as opposed to the Alabama game. Right, I, right. I will say that. Yeah. Yep. Well, one of the teams that you guys are going to have to face on your road to an SEC championship is the Tennessee Volunteers. They hosted the Kentucky Wildcats, and this was actually a game for a good bit. Kentucky was driving down, I think, 21 to 18 late, and I don't remember if they threw a pick six or, or what happened, but anyway, it was it was a very good game, very close late. Thought there was a chance Kentucky might actually pull this thing off, but they didn't have enough, and Tennessee got it done again at home. I, I think Tennessee is one of those, they kind of remind me of like Penn State, or um, who's the oh like Miami even where it's like I you can't not put them at number seven, but at the same time I will be zero percent surprised if when the dust settles leading into the fo- the college football playoff if they're on the outside looking in because they still have some work to do ahead of them and I don't think they can do it I don't know that they have what it takes to actually. Um, get those things done to, to beat. Let's so say they got, I know they got you guys in a couple of weeks and I don't remember what their other, um, let's see. They have Georgia. Oh, and then, well, they have Vanderbilt um, in Nashville. So, they, so they got, they got that sneaky Vanderbilt game. So, yeah, I mean, I, I guess they could be in the playoff just by losing to you guys and having that loss to Arkansas and the loss to you and that win against Alabama as their signature and then not ha- not actually make the SEC championship game because of the two losses in conference yeah, and benefit from that and just sneak into the playoff as like a 10 or 11 and just get in that way, but maybe yeah. a nine. Um, I doubt they'll host a playoff game because just because of the way that, things are going to set up, but it's going to, it's, it's about to get wild and crazy, Tyler. Like we are going to have some madness going down. Yep. And the reason why I say that is because if you look at things, so Arkansas looks great. They beat Tennessee in Fayetteville. Then LSU beats the doors off of them in Fayetteville. Then they turn around and go to Mississippi State and just obliterate them and hung, hung like 56 points on them. Yep. Then they bring Ole Miss, or they, I think, they, no, they went to, uh, did they go to Oxford for that one? I'm not I sure. I th- no, I think it was in Fayetteville, but it was a day game. Anyway, regardless, Ole Miss destroyed them. 63-31. Uh, Jackson Dart had a field day. Uh, this Watkins kid was just going crazy. Had like four or five touchdowns. Um it was just ugly. It was a bloodbath. And this, again, is one of those things where it's like, I don't really know what to think about Ole Miss because they will do this against a team that's not that good. Because Arkansas is okay, but they're not that good. 
Um, but then when the rubber really meets the road, they they look what they did against Kentucky at home. Then look what they did against LSU, blew a 17-7 lead. So I just don't know what to expect. Um, I did know what to expect here, though. Easy. So I didn't understand easy. why Auburn was a six-and-a-half-point favorite easy. against Vanderbilt. I don't care where they're playing the game. Auburn's not good, and Vanderbilt's decent. Yeah. So, like, how – this is another one, like, you know, we say eight and four until proven otherwise for Texas yeah. A&M. Um, do not doubt Vanderbilt until proven otherwise. Right. They haven't given us a reason to stop – to start – to stop. They almost beat Texas them. last week. Right. What are we, what are we doing here? <laughs> We're Come talking on, about people. a team that could be like That's literally if the ball bounces one way, that could be competing for an SEC championship. Like That's right. That's right. <laughs> exactly. All right. So so we, we leave the SEC, and that's where this is where it really starts to get uh, interesting. Gross. Um yeah. so Ohio State, Penn State, it was ugly, man. Um I you know, we talked about Kalen DeBoer, Les Miles, Mark Richt. Mm-hmm. Is it time to start talking about James Franklin? I I don't know, man. Like, it's just, like, the fact that, like, they the, – the, the opportunity to win the game was quite literally right there. How do you throw the ball to Tyler Warren to get you to the four and then never – Look at him again. Touch the ball again. Because it's – I don't know. That's the, I wish I could even rationalize that for them. But the the truth is, I don't know. Like James Franklin, you have Ohio State dead to rights mm-hmm. on the three yard line. You have four tries with mm-hmm. a in a the, with a Division One football team to get three yards. Four tries, three yards, and you don't get it. How? Is that humanly possible? Please explain. Please explain to me how that happens. I don't understand. And now James Franklin, I believe, is what, 1 in 10, 1 in 11, or some ridiculous number like that against Ohio State? Something stupid. Yeah. Well, like, he's like 0 for shit, 13 bro. now. He's 0 for 13 on top five against they, top five. Teams. They give it to Katron three times. And I do understand that Katron Allen is a great running back, but holy shit, you have Drew Allard. You have other people to give the ball to like yeah. spread it out do something go just run up the middle three you times have, the best athlete on the field is tyler warren and he right. doesn't even get a sniff of the ball yeah like, like, i understand you got good backs but like good lord good lord good lord good lord you pass it one time it's on fourth and one mm-hmm, why mm-hmm. why do you do that How well that and, and yeah and so my contention on that was like okay i get running the ball on first down Right, that's totally fine. understand like, it. Get down there, go, go, run, see if you can pop them one. Yeah, and then you don't have to, you know, because you don't want to throw the ball away. You don't right. want to like, you don't want to um, throw a pick because you've already had. And uh, I mean, it's really unfortunate because that one's not on Drew Aller. He had no. to throw that ball in the perfect spot. Yep. Where I don't know how, but like the receiver like gave the ball back. <laughs> to, <laughs> so never mind. Like, Here you can have it, and then he get, he gets control of it right as his foot is leaving the ground from inside the paint, um, and it's just like man, that's a terrible. And that was on first down, I think, maybe second down. It was it was early in that series, so like you, you were going to get points if you don't throw a pick. So I understand maybe the the hesitation to throw, but like first down, okay, yeah, pound it, see if you can pop it in. Yep. All right, cool. That didn't work. Now let's instead of just running Tyler Warren up side side to side in motion and then having him taking him out of the play, yeah. let's do something where we try to either attack the edges, either with the run game, or hit him in the flat and let him just catch the ball with his back to the goal line and lean in. Yep. Whatever. Like something. But running the ball up the middle three consecutive times and then throwing the ball into triple coverage across the middle of the field. Like at least put that, put that dude, put that big dude, give me Tyler Warren in the slot. Right. On on one side, whatever side Aller is most comfortable throwing the fade to and let him run an inside fade. Yeah. And then just throw it up and let Tyler Warren go up and block out and high point the ball. Like a, like he's rebounding done. Like this is, 
I don't know. I, it boggles my mind. But anyway, congrats to Ohio State. Um, when we do our preview show for this upcoming week, hope to have um, Jeremiah on to uh, maybe Drew as well to uh, to talk about that one and to talk about what Ohio State's prospects look like going forward. Because I think just watching this game, I really think that this was the resistible force versus the movable object. Right. I don't feel like this was like this heavyweight battle. I felt like this this seemed more like an Iowa Iowa State kind of game where it was yeah. like neither one of these teams really wanted to win and they were basically competing with each other to give it away. Yeah. Um I it was it was ugly. I don't know that either one of these teams has what it takes to actually go all the way and win this thing, but we'll see. It's uh that's what that's what's going to be great about the 12 team playoff is um you you you're going to settle all this stuff on the field. You actually get to go out there and play the games and we don't get to just talk about it and uh say like, "Well, you don't deserve to even be in the consideration because we don't think you're good enough." 12 teams is plenty to be able to get that done. Although I will say there is still like this weird sort of corner case that <laughs> it's so funny because when we when we had the BCS system, you would have like three undefeated teams yeah. and there would be like this one undefeated team that you'd be like, man, it'd be really cool if we could include this other undefeated team. And then we go to four team playoff and there aren't, I don't think we ever had like five undefeated teams, I think we had but we had, three. we had, we had a, we had a few seasons though, where there were like three or four one loss teams yeah. that had a, that had an argument or there was an undefeated team that got left out. Right. Or there was an undefeated team that got put in that shouldn't have been there, maybe. I don't know. Maybe it would have been cool to have them in a 12 team, but maybe they shouldn't Cincinnati. have been in the 14. Cincinnati. Yeah, Cincinnati, yeah. Um, but, you know, it, that's the nature of when you have that mm. tight of a box, right? Right. You expand it to 12, and for some reason, the football guys are just like, ha-ha, hold my beer, because we might have seven undefeated teams, <laughs> yeah. and – you're either going to have to put three undefeated teams that you normally wouldn't think deserve to be in there, or you're going to. So I'm talking about Army and BYU, <laughs> yeah. and like you know what I'm saying. Like it's, I don't know how this is going to go. The one thing we don't have to worry about is the ACC producing the three undefeated teams that we were talking about before, <laughs> yeah. because. <laughs> uh, Clemson doesn't have uh, an undefeated ACC record anymore. Neither does Pitt. We'll get to that in just a second. But Louisville, and I kind of saw this one coming. We did. We Louisville it. took Clemson to the woodshed. This game was not as close as this score looks. Louisville was in control of this game throughout. They kept Clemson at arm's length for basically the entirety of that game. And just just kept pushing them away. They weren't the only number eleven team to lose this week, though, on their home turf. Iowa State saw the Red Raiders go into Ames and beat the number eleven uh, Cyclones twenty three twenty two. So another undefeated team bites mm -hmm. the dust. And then one of the undefeated teams that stays alive is Miami in the ACC. They are now the only undefeated ACC uh, team. And they are undefeated overall as well, which whereas like uh, Clemson was had that loss to Georgia, but they were undefeated in the ACC. So now it looks like Miami is just going to walk through um, straight to the ACC championship and beat up on whoever gets there. I will say this, though. If somehow, because Pitt also lost, um, if you end up with... a And I, before we move on to that Pitt-SMU game, so uh, one quick note about this. Cam Ward and the Heisman Trophy. No disrespect to Cam Ward, but he threw a pass that was like off his back foot. Throw it. it was, I mean, it's a nice throw, but it was, it should have been either incomplete or maybe even intercepted. The DB like reaches up, not hits it with his hand. It goes sideways into the, another receiver's hands. Yep. And he catches it right by the sideline. It's like, okay, all right. That's not Cam Ward making a great throw. That's like getting super lucky mm -hmm. that that shit didn't get picked off. Then what does he do on, I don't remember what point of the game it was, but it was a one-score game. And Duke actually took the lead in this game at one point and was up by two scores. Um, 
but Cam Ward like rolling right, throws it all the way across his body into like double triple coverage, gets it picked off. I'm just like, what? This is your Heisman Trophy candidate, your Heisman Trophy winner for for a lot of people. And I know Travis Hunter has moved up into that top spot now, but I'm just I'm not sold on Cam Ward. I told you all about that last week. Yeah. I'm not sold, and I, I remain it's like, unsold. It's like that's like the. Um... Like the Johnny Manziel, you know, obviously Johnny was electric, but he also did have Mike Evans to, mm-hmm. to, to just kind of find where, like, mm-hmm. there's some place where he's literally running around, running around, running around, and just throws it without even looking. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, his receivers, you know, now I'm not saying that Johnny Manziel didn't deserve a Heisman Trophy. I'm yeah. just saying there are some plays, yeah. like, in his career, just like you, what you just said, where it's just like, holy shit, that could have gone so many different ways like, wrong. And, the, yeah. and the best outcome happened you know what i mean right right <laughs> now he had a rabbit's foot lodged somewhere um because yeah. and he was chasing the white rabbit so it makes sense um <laughs> but uh smu just put a whooping on pit and they have uh, look it's been a long time since uh, the Eric Dickerson, yeah. Craig James, Pony Express, and uh, all the money and what took that team, that whole program down, you know, yeah. three, four decades ago. Um, yeah. But SMU might be back, and they're one of those teams that, like, they get to the ACC championship against Miami, either them or Clemson, and that's going to be the toughest team mm-hmm. Miami has faced all year. So get ready because it's coming. Miami's not going to just skate all the way through this thing. And I would submit this. In my opinion, in my bracket, if I'm filling it out, if I'm part of the committee, I am pounding the table. If Miami does not win the ACC championship, they do not deserve to be in the playoff at all. Period. End of story. If they if they go through this like hot, wet, dog shit schedule that they have played so far, undefeated but then they finally and and they should have lost to virginia tech they could have lost to louisville a couple weeks ago if they go and lose to smu or clemson in the acc championship game what's their signature win none of it none of it nothing there is none there's no signature win for this team and what's the signature moment for cam ward he led a thrilling comeback against boston college and Virginia Tech, like what? What are we talking about? Really? You yeah. beat nobody. You shouldn't have been behind in the first place. Yeah. Anyway. Dude. Yeah. Them beating the shit out of the Florida is the only like respectable like win. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. first game. But like other than that, like they have gotten by the skin of their teeth almost twice. You know what I mean? Like right. they could have they could have two losses easily right now, and so they don't. They, they, They've played a, a very weak schedule, and they have barely escaped a few of those games. You know yeah. who hasn't done that? Indiana. <laughs> Indiana has played a fairly weak schedule and has beaten the brakes off of everybody they've played. Well, yeah. So how is Indiana not in the top five and Miami yeah. is? Just Seriously. because of hype. It's all because of hype. That's all it's it is. It's like, Warden we Heist. think these guys are gr- better, so we're just going to put them there because what? Well, why? No results, just vibes. It's all vibes. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm feeling the vibes from Indiana. We're going to see. They're going to have some some answering to do as the season goes on. They're still going to have um, some matchups that they're going to have to uh, prove themselves. But they get to the Big Ten Championship undefeated. And then they win that thing, oh my or, God. or even if they lose it, even if they cough up the Big Ten championship, don't they have Ohio State uh, um, coming up? I think they have at least one of the big teams in the in the Big Ten to play. And I think it's Ohio State. I want to yeah, say I, before the season is out, they will have to play one of the I can find it for you, one of the Big Ten contenders. Um, yeah. They're not. They're not just. Skating. Yeah, they're not skating. Uh, they 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 finish. Yeah, they finish out their season. They play Michigan next week, and then they think they have a break, and then they play Ohio State and Purdue. So yeah, Michigan, Ohio State, Purdue. Yeah. 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 So, um, and Ohio State is at the shoe. Yeah. So yeah, if they go in there and beat Ohio State, what? What now? Yeah. yeah what are exactly. you going to say now? 
Yeah, that uh, might just that might just take Ohio State out of the playoff entirely. Oh no, it definitely will. Like right. Ohio State is playing with fire already, and yeah. they 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 don't really need to be messing around um, anymore. So I mean that that's going to be a huge game. I would not be surprised at all if game day ends up there for that well, one. Seriously, if they're, if, they're, um, if Indiana has no losses at that point, I would say absolutely. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, yeah, it, and and that's because then it's a de facto Big Ten. Um, championship qualifier essentially yeah, seriously yeah and and then you know the only thing so they both have michigan and the, and they play each other and that's pretty much it they both have purdue and michigan yeah. on their schedule and and they play each other oh like gosh. three man three man and, rotate, little round yeah, robin right there ohio state has uh has a date with northwestern as well but that's Ooh. that's all it is in addition so um another one so i you know i got to get off the Kansas State bandwagon now because um, Avery Johnson and company. Now they went into Houston, a little bit of a hostile environment, but still, you're supposed to be better than this. It came down to like a hail mary at the end of the game, and Johnson threw it out of the back of the end zone. Um, they could have won this game at the horn, but uh, failed to do so, and just failed to capitalize on an opportunity to really climb their way into the college football playoff. I, I think this effectively eliminates them from contention. Um, they Maybe they could still win the Big 12. I don't know. I haven't looked at the standings to see, like, if there's a path through tiebreakers for them to still sneak in to the Big, Ten, uh, Big 12 to championship. But I, this is, uh, this is a, a pretty devastating blow for them, even yeah. though you saw Iowa State take it on the chin as mm-hmm. well. However... Uh, they were, they were up the front. But, like, this yeah. really elevates Colorado I was gonna say, to the point like, now yeah. where, like... They have a path. It's there. They have a pass. They, they do. They absolutely, absolutely have a pass because there's only one – like, there's only one – BYU is the only – like, they're undefeated overall mm-hmm. and undefeated in conference. Mm-hmm. And now you have, you know, Colorado and Iowa State are the other – are the only one-loss teams mm-hmm. in the uh, Big 12. So, if Iowa State subs their toe one more time and Colorado can finish it out with their schedule, like, they can – they can you'll see they'll have – and, I mean, it's not say BYU is going to continue to do what they're doing. And so – I kind of, I kind of think BYU is going to continue doing what they've been doing. That's, yeah, like it, it sounds like they they might have an undefeated season on their hands. That's the lean. Yeah, that's, that's where I'm needed. Yeah, for Colorado, sure. Colorado finishes out with Texas Tech, Utah, Kansas, and Oklahoma State, which is, in terms of the Big Twelve is not a foregone conclusion in any of those games. Mm-hmm. But it is. I'll say this. Texas Tech and Kansas could be tough, but they should right, beat. Right. They should beat Oklahoma State. Yeah. Of course, it's it's Gundy, so you never know. With Mike Gundy, he, they will look like crap, yeah. like and that's seven games Colorado. out of the year, and then they'll go. Then they'll go beat Colorado in Col in Denver, like and or Boulder, wherever the hell it is. Boulder, anyway. yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and you'll just be left scratching your head, like, what the hell happened? This team has been trash all year. Why did they beat Colorado? Yeah. They got to go down to Texas Tech, which is, like, not, like, the easy – that's where mm-hmm. – I forget where that is in Texas. But um, they got to go down. And that's they, in they, Lubbock, they, right? Yeah, that's in Lubbock. That's right. And they've yeah. go, got to go to Utah. No, sorry, I'm sorry. They play Utah at home. And they got to go down to Kansas, which is I feel like is a little bit of a trap. And mm-hmm. then they have – if, if they, they were going to Stillwater to finish it out, I would like, oh, shit, trap. Yeah, game. yeah. But mm-hmm. they have – they bring Oklahoma State to Boulder. So, with that being said, the Colorado Buffaloes have a path to potentially the Big 12 championship and then potentially the playoff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's, it's right in front of them, which is crazy to say. Which would be crazy. And then and then it's like you start to have – like there's going to be – bro, I, it's November, man. And you know what that means. Yeah. She's about to get crazy. Yeah. And I think we're setting up for – an amazing November of like, I don't really know what to expect. And what we've seen so far from this college football season is that it has been the most unpredictable of all college football seasons. Right. I mean, look, Michigan even scored 17 points against Oregon. Like who knows what could happen? <laughs> you know? yeah, golf, golf claps for Michigan. Y'all, y'all, y'all figured out how to throw the ball a little bit enough to, <laughs> enough to hang 17 points on, a pretty solid Oregon defense. Um, Dylan Gabriel still did his thing, but no, but like this, this season has been so wild, so crazy. There have been so many outcomes that I would have never predicted. And then some that are becoming predictable by their 
by the uh, the fact that you can look at something and be like, hey, this looks like one of those games that's going to surprise everyone. Yep. But it's not going to surprise me. Yeah. Um, South Carolina beating Texas A&M. Like, yep. I, I was 0% surprised. At Louisville. That. Bandy. Louisville beating Clemson in yeah. in Clemson. Yep. Like in Death Valley, <laughs> fake Death Valley, but yeah. Death Valley nonetheless. At um, night. At night. How? How, Dabo? How did you let that happen? <laughs> oh, yeah, and now I'm sure Louisville's probably, they're probably kicking themselves for not finishing the job against Miami a couple Dude, weeks ago. Dude, yeah, because they're, because they're they talking have. about it. Right, you're talking about a potential ACC championship spot if they can knock mm-hmm. off both these teams. Yeah, bro, you walk into Clemson at night and smack them around. Like, are you kidding? That's, that's like, as an ACC team to do that to Dabo is, that's something else. Yeah. And guess who's bowl eligible? Vanderbilt. I can't believe are it. Are they actually? Yes. Oh, my. First, first time since 2018, Vanderbilt is bowl eligible. I didn't even know they were bowl eligible in 2018. I'm going to be <laughs> perfectly honest. I've forgotten about that. <laughs> But that was before they started their long stretch of sucking really bad. Yeah. Um, they have now won more SEC games this season than they won in like the previous five seasons combined. <laughs> um, it's insane. <laughs> so <laughs> shout out to Clark Lee for what he's doing Dude, over there seriously. because Vandy, Vandy is back in the top 25. We back <laughs> SEC, get it done. Um, let's go. Let's look, let's look at the standings real quick because I had them pulled up here for a second. Uh, let's see where we got it. Where's the standings? Here we go. Da, da, da. Dude, that's so awesome. Did shout I, out to Vandy. I, I hope I kept it updated. Nah, this is the SEC standings. Come on. I had it earlier, and then I, I failed. My apologies. No, what is this? The rankings. You want the rankings. rankings. I'm supposed to be on rankings, and I'm on. What the hell is this? Shout out to Army. Still undefeated. Yeah, shout out to Army. Um, <laughs> By the way, get ready, because I would not be surprised at all if they lose this weekend. Uh, North Texas. um is better than people think, and I can't pull up the standings. Um, That's okay. I'm, I'm still trying, but anyway, they uh, do not sleep on North Texas actually pulling off this upset. I, I told y'all not to trust Navy. You saw what happened to them this weekend. They lost to Rice. Um, how do you lose to food? Um, <laughs> it's not good. Vanderbilt not is good 24. Vanderbilt's Say what? Vanderbilt's, I love Vanderbilt's 24, which is hilarious. They were 25. Mm-hmm. Then they lost to Texas by three. Like, oh, never mind. You're not ranked anymore. And now they're 24. Yeah. Well, uh, don't even get me started on this. Like, never, like, like, like bro. And they let, they let it's the Zuby rank. Listen, so here's what, here's, what the, here's what these idiots who vote it's are telling you. It's your notion. It's and how then what stupid they are them. and how clueless they are. To them, almost beating – who was your number one team in the nation two weeks prior and who's now your number five team in the nation, almost beating them takes you out of the top 25. All you have to do to get back in the top 25 is beat Auburn. Auburn. (laughs) What? (laughs) So if they had beaten Auburn the week before, where would they have been? Like 15th? Yeah, like the team at least. What are you you telling people? Like this is so stupid. You have no idea what you're doing. Um, yeah, so here oh, we go. So SEC teams, you got Georgia, Texas, Tennessee, Alabama, so that's four. Question. LSU, Texas A&M, that's five, six, seven, and then I, I eight, got a question. Vanderbilt. Yeah. Are they are they no longer doing like weekly – is it going to be the AP poll oh. like the whole year until – No, 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 no. Like it's time? No. Friday. Friday, right before LSU-Alabama. Friday, we get our first 12, 12 team playoff committee rankings. I, I was wondering about that. Like, yeah. I was wondering when that this was Friday, coming. this this coming Friday, we get our first uh, committee rankings. So we will start to get a feel for the vibes of the committee. Yeah, because they started um, like I feel like last year they were doing it like in October, but I feel like I'm glad they waited because their show would have made no sense at this well, point. We used to do, so we used to do the um, the BCS standings when it was just a two team deal yeah. they used to come out on like the Tuesday after the weekend right. or whatever. And they would have that show on ESPN and uh-huh. do all that stuff. Um, and that usually was after like week six or week seven. Yeah. And then when the 14 playoffs started, 
they kept that schedule yeah. week six, week seven, somewhere in there, yeah. and then they would they and would announce, oh, garbage truck outside announce uh, the top twenty five every week, right? They would yeah. they would announce the the and it was the but it was the committee top twenty five, right. yeah, that were like the actual BCS standings in the yeah. BCS era or the committee CFP standings in yeah. the CFP era. Um, what they and so like last year it was the same thing like yeah. week six week seven they started doing that but so this year because they don't have that um and they they've waited until it's going to be like right before week eleven now yeah what ESPN has been doing is they've been doing this little mock draft kind of show yeah. that is okay here's the AP stuff but. Yeah. We're taking, you know, we're showing you like this would be the conference champion here. This would be the conference champion here because the top four conference champions get buys. Yep. And then the fifth conference champion, um, or the whatever it is, it's the uh, not the fifth conference champion, the the best uh, group of five. Yeah. Conference champion, highest ranked, gets the five seed. Or oh. gets it? No, gets it. Doesn't get the gets five in. seed. Gets in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the five through twelves are all, you know, kind of whatever. The, At large. And so one of those, te- yeah, the, one of those teams could be in there. But yeah, so you get those five spots that are all conference champions, and then everything else is at large bids. So it could be some of these other conference champions, but it could also be um, one of the. Oh, I think it's the top four ranked conference yeah. champions. So like Boise State could actually find themselves as like the fourth best conference champion and, get the and they could seat? actually get a buy. Really? They, they could get the four seed. Yeah. Like if the, if the big 12 ends up with like a bunch of two loss teams oh. and they're just kind of beating each other up, the big 12 could actually find themselves okay. outside of the top four. Yeah, I feel bad so, for like making this like we're talking about this live, a, but like it's helping it's me different. out, and therefore I think it's yeah, gonna help yeah, no, other it's, people it's out. Fine. So, um, and then you you're gonna get into that's where some of this other stuff is gonna start to to kind of rear its head. So let me pull up the uh, the standings again because it'll it'll be or the rankings, it'll be um, informative for that. So, what I was talking about before with the undefeated team. So you got Oregon and Miami. They're not gonna face each other. So those, they could both end up undefeated. BYU could end up undefeated. Indiana or Oregon, one of them has to drop a game because they're gonna they're either gonna play each other or they're not gonna play each other because one of them's gonna lose. Mm. But then down here you have Army. So you could actually have uh three undefeated teams. It seems like there was another undefeated. Uh, maybe not. Now that we've okay, so now because we got rid of some of those other undefeated teams um, earlier this week, we we are now in a position where I think we don't have to worry about the the nightmare scenario I was talking yeah. about. What if you have five undefeated teams? Yeah. Two of them are from a uh, group of five conferences, and you only let one of them in because you say yeah. Alabama's better than them yeah. or whatever. You know, um, then it, then it gets kind of kooky, but. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's where that's where things end up, and what you're basically going to end up with is you could have four or five teams from the SEC. The way that things are shaking out right now, um, Ohio State better be careful if they don't beat Indiana. Um, if Indiana stubs its toe against Michigan, mm-hmm. you know, and loses to Ohio State, they could be out. Yep. And then it could just be Ohio State, Penn State, and Oregon, and then Penn State. I don't know. Like, do they do they do they still run the table the rest of the way? Yep. I don't know. Like, it's there's all these different scenarios where if it if it works out to where you only get two Big Ten teams in, then you could open up the path for there to be more SEC teams, and vice versa. If you end up with Indiana, Oregon, Ohio State, and Penn State all making the playoff. Yeah. It's got to be only three SEC teams, maybe four. Yeah. And then you're looking at all those other conferences fighting for like one spot each. Yeah. I mean, uh, fighting for one remaining spot. So like if you have four SEC and four Big Ten, that's eight spots right there. Plus a group of five, that's nine. Plus the Big 12 champ, plus the ACC champ. Okay. Yep. Now we are at what was that? 
Is that, that 10 was, spots? Uh, I think that's 11, right? 10 or 11 spots. Yeah. So now you have you have two, one or two spots for all of the remaining teams. Yeah. That fifth ACC, that fifth, uh, probably, I don't think we have enough for a fifth Big Ten team. Because who would it be? Michigan, USC, no, it's not going to be any of them. Um, they're they're not good enough. So yeah, you're you're going to end up with three or four Big Ten teams between three and five SEC teams, um, between two and three ACC teams. Yeah, one or two Big Twelves, and then you have like, okay, so what are you going to do with like an Army and a Boise State, right, and a Tulane, you know, like all these schools that it's like, man, you you're You've been doubting them, but they keep winning. And so the, the committee is going to have some interesting. And then we have all that other the chaos in the conferences that's going to be really yep. fun to watch. Because um, look, if Texas a and like runs the table somehow, they still are in the SEC title game. Yep. And they're probably playing either LSU or Georgia, maybe Tennessee, depending on who wins the Tennessee-Georgia matchup. Um but we got bigger fish to fry. Yeah. We both have some pretty huge games coming up. LSU hosts Alabama this weekend. College game day will be there. Georgia travels to Oxford to take mm-hmm. on Ole Miss and Lane Kiffin. No easy shakes there. We will get into all of that later on in the week when we do our preview show for week 11. But for now, we want to remind you all to like, to share, to subscribe. I'm Chad. He's Tyler. This is the South End Zone. We appreciate y'all coming through. Peace, y'all.